Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. Dear God, just thanks for being our God, watching over us, loving us, taking care of us the way you do, God. And God, I thank you for this morning's fellowship and for the people that will, you know, link in or zoom in or dial in. God, I just thank you for all of them being blessed and having your word. And God, I thank you for the word that will, that will be taught, that will be shared here, God, how it can help and bless people. God, I thank you for, as it moves out later, even with a podcast or on the website or Facebook or wherever it gets to move out. So God, I thank you for that. And thank you, God, that we have a good ex good expectation, knowing that you'll take care of us and what will happen here will really bless and help people, God. So God, I thank you for these things in the name of your wonderful son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And see the, the design or what I was thinking about when I was thinking about these uh, biblical study sessions, that it would be a power packed time right into God's word with, with people, great teachers of God's word that I invite to teach and, and me also, that we would just have great word that you could utilize power packed in your lives immediately that you could do something with it and that we wouldn't waste any time with, uh, you know, the things that you could do at your own local fellowship, like uh, prayer and manifestations and songs and things like that. This would be a design as the word of God presented power packed word of God. And I'm going to be the first teacher today. And I want to, I got some notes here that I'll share with you. And there they are. All righty. Well, the, the title of my teaching for this morning is A Prosperous Journey. And before I get started with the teaching, I'd like to share a little bit about some keys on how to read the Bible. How to read the Bible so that we can tap into the lessons for living the more abundant life. And I'd like to show you this in uh, Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 11, which is called sometimes the honor roll of believing, the chapter 11 of Hebrews. It goes through and it lays out all the things, starting with Enoch all, and all the great men in the Old Testament and how they believed God. So that's why it's called the honor roll of believing. And it helps us to learn about believing. But in verse 32, it says, And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephi, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. See, Paul, as he's writing this, and Paul is the writer, the author is God is saying, I don't have time to tell you about all the great men in the Old Testament. But you know what he isn't saying, but is implied, is you do. You could read about these people. You could know about the men and women of the Old Testament just simply by reading the scriptures. Just by reading the scripture. Verse 33 says, who through faith subdued kingdoms. Wow. They, through faith, through believing, they subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Who did that? Daniel. Daniel did it. And we know that because we, un, we know the scriptures, right? We think it, our minds easily go to that. Quench the violence of fire. Who did that? Exactly. Out of weakness were made strong. You could read those records in the Old Testament, how out of weakness they were made strong. Wax 
vigilant in fight, turn to fight the armies of the aliens. Pretty wild, aliens involved here. <laughs> but what, you, what the, the scriptures tell us is the records and these records in God's word are for our encouragement. In God's word, basically you have principles and promises and words of encouragement. And I, my note just simply says, Paul in his writings of God's word didn't have time to mention all these, but we do. And we have our Bibles and we could look at these records and gain more scope more understanding and how they apply in our lives today with the encouragement that is, is in there. And see, God expects us as Bible students to compare spiritual things with spiritual thing. Pretty neat. Biblical precepts from other parts of the Bible. When we read something in God's word, and it's on a serpent topic or a precept or an understanding, we, we should bring to our mind other places in the Bible that talk about this. This is, this is the key in reading the scriptures, reading the Bible and understanding the Bible. And we should use those. We should use all the keys on how the Bible interprets itself in the verse, in the context, and where it's been used before, and all the other keys that we have learned, because we've learned so many more. I'd like to show you another one of these places in God's word, which is more direct to the teaching that I'm doing today, and that would be in Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, it says... What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, see Paul in writing God's word, right? Says, what should we say about Abraham, our father? Well, what do you know about Abraham, our father? That's what hit my mind. As pertaining to the flesh hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath thereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scriptures? See, that's why we should always be comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Putting the word together. See that? Understanding administrations. To whom it is written to. How it applies to our lives. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now unto him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. See, if you have to work for it, it's, it, you're, it's, it's a debt. You work, you work a job, some kind of work, you get paid, right? But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified. Who did the justifying? Yeah. Jesus Christ accomplished the work, right? His faith is counted for righteousness. So with this information, I wanted to know more about Abraham. And a few years ago, I did a biblical studies uh, teaching series on the example of Abraham's believing. I did it at my local fellowship, one teaching a week for a while as I went through this. And you, you could see what Abraham did. Learning what Abraham did helps your believing. You can see what he did, what he went through. And it's just a, a tremendous little series if you ever wanted to look at it. But, and it's on my website, stevejanes.com. And there's a teaching series on the example of Abraham's believing. You know, they call him the father of believing. So that's pretty neat. But in the, the last teaching that I did in that series was on the prosperous journey. And that's the one that I want to redo today. I have deepened my scope of understanding, and I'm going to share that today because I've seen a little more of understanding. I have, and I'm going to share what I have. You guys might have already gotten it. It says, but if anyone wanted to look into more detail of the example of Abraham's belief, and there is a class on my website. 
Looking at 3 John 2, and this is what it says. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. It's a wonderful verse that we've used many times to try to help people, to share with people, letting them know that God wants them to prosper and God wants them to be in health. And we've shared that with them. And when I've shared this many times, there'll be someone in the group that would say, it doesn't always mean money. <laughs> and it doesn't. I never said it did. <laughs> but that's what they would say. But it includes money. It includes everything you need to be prosperous, to be successful. That's the idea of the word prosperous, to be successful, to be able to get the desired results in your life. And that's why I'm putting, I put this teaching together so that we could see that and see it in great shape. And so, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 24, and the whole teaching, for the most part, will be in Genesis chapter 24. And in uh, Genesis chapter 24 is the first four usages of the word prosperous. The first four right here in one chapter, meaning blessings and all things. That's what it means. Prosperous, to be blessings, God's blessings in all things. And I think you will see that as we go through the teaching. And in verse 2 through 7, it says, And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, There ruleth over all that he had. Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But that thou shalt go into thy country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure that the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land, unto the land from whence thou wast taken? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bringest not my son hither again. And then verse 7, look at this. And the Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from hence. Pretty neat. So Abraham gives his head servant a, a task. He says, Go into the land of where I came from to my brother's home or the family's home and find a wife for my son, Isaac. And he goes, well, what if the woman won't come back? He says, don't worry about that. He says, you won't be liable for that, but God is going to send his angel before thee and thou shalt take away a wife unto the, my son. See? So you, he's basically saying, you're not going to be alone. You're going to have an angel with you. And thinking about angels, I just want to point out a couple things. One, number one, is that what we have is much better than an angel. We have Holy Spirit, Christ within us. God is always with us at all times. I know of records of the angels helping people in the Old Testament. I'm sure we all do. Also in our administration, angels have helped people, you know, like Peter in prison or Paul on the ship. But we still have something greater than an angel with us. We have spirit in us and it doesn't come and go. It's there all the time. 
So that's pretty neat. And I want to point something else. When we go through this record, we never see the angel. I mean, he doesn't ma manifest himself, you know, but we know that an angel went with this servant. So he has that on his side too, which is pretty cool. But man, what we have is so much better. We got Christ within us. We got nine manifestations. We have the entire scriptures that we can be edified with and encouraged with. But I just wanted to point that out. We'll just continue reading the record in verse eight. It says, and if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shall be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son hither again. And the servant put his hand under his thigh of, his, of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning the matter. matter. And the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Pretty wild. But see, this uh, elder servant was uh, like the CEO of Abraham Incorporated. Yeah. He watched over things for them. And Abraham was very prosperous. We know that from the earlier records that you can read in the book of Abraham. I mean, uh, Genesis, the book of Genesis. And as you, as you read that, you can see that he was very prosperous. He gave half of his wealth to Lot. Lots of great records in there. So he was prosperous. Going to verse 11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the, uh, without the city by the well of water at the time of evening. In, that, in the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. He starts out by praying. He says, God, help me in this situation. Help me out. Verse 13 says, He's continuing to pray. Behold, I stand here before the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, I will give thy camels also. Let the same be she that thou has appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou has shown kindness on my master. What a prayer. It's a great prayer. You know, when we are on a mission or endeavoring to do things in life, we can pray too. We can pray. And when we pray, the servant prayed, when we pray and ask for what he wants to see done, expecting to see a favorable outcome. That's how to live prosperously today. Pretty wild. We pray, we ask God for help. Tremendous lessons here about prosperity and receiving favorable outcomes. Look at verse 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking, he wasn't even finished speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born of uh, Bethel, the son of Michal, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with, it, with her pitcher upon her shoulder, and the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well to fill her pitcher and came up. 
one of the things this reminds me of, she was very, a very pretty girl, right? That's what it says. She was fair to look at. It reminds me of Sarah, Abraham's wife. She was very beautiful. And if you read the records in Genesis, you will see even in her older age, she was very beautiful. There must have been one of those families where all the girls in them are pretty. And we've seen this in our lifetime, right? Some families that just have pretty girls. Well, it's true. It happens. My, my, I'll just say this. My wife, all the girls in her family are very pretty. So I lucked out. That's pretty neat. Just a side note. Look at uh, Genesis uh, 17. 17 through 20. And the servant ran to meet her. Well, he didn't walk. Verse 17, yep. Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, well, uh, drink, my Lord. And she hastened and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him to drink. And when she had uh, done giving him to drink, she says, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drink. And she hastened and emptied her pitcher into a trough and ran again to the well to draw water and drew for all his camel. This blows my mind. I'm going to tell you, she was willing to, you know, serve and bless people. But what I really see here is camels drink a lot of water. You know what yeah. I mean? Lots of water and 10 of them. I don't know how long that took her to go and fill her pitcher and do the drop and get some more and do it. But it probably took some time, some work and some energy. I knew a guy that had a, uh, a farm. He had a bunch of cattle. And what he would do to make sure his cattle had uh, lots of water is he turned on a faucet that filled up a trough so they could go and drink it. And there was a ton of water in there. One of you may know, but I think a horse drinks so many gallons per day. Five, my wife says, but that's a lot of work. And so when I think of Rebecca, I think this was someone who was willing to serve and bless people no matter how much work it took. Pretty neat. Verse 21 says, and the man wondered at her held his peace to wit, whether the Lord has made his journey prosperous or not. First usage of the word prosperous in the Bible right here. Here, prosper means a favorable outcome. Doesn't mean he'd get rich. It means that he would get what he needed. He wanted to fulfill his master's request. Pretty neat. How can we get favorable in outcomes in our life? That's the lesson for us. Prayer, asking God, knowing that we have Christ within us that can show us what we need to do and how to do it. It's just wonderful. This, this record is really a record of encouragement for us. Look at verse 22 through 25. <laughs> it says, and it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of a half shekel of weight and two bracelets for her hands of 10 shekels weight of gold and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethelu, the son of Milchel, which bare unto Nahor. And she said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. Wow, that's pretty, that's a, a, a bunch of people and a bunch of animals. And she says, we've got what you need right here. Spiritually minded people always look for ways to bless others. In the lands and times of the Bible, in Oriental cust customs, 
the way they would look at it is if someone came to your door, a stranger, unaware, it could be sent from God. And they would invite them in and bless them and take care of them. They would do that. And they thought if they did that, they would be getting blessed from God, favor from God for their labor of love. And that's the way they thought. And so when this happened, this situation, she was a good worker. She was a servant and she did the job with a lot of work. See, she could have said, you know, I'll take care of you, but man, 10 camels, here's my picture. You can use my picture, okay? But that's not what she did. She did the work. I get, I get really blessed by this. And I'll tell you how blessed I got by this. I named my daughter Rebecca when she was born because this is the mind picture that I wanted for my daughter to be that type of person. And you know who else is that type of person? My wife. In a, uh, in a fellowship that I was running, my wife was part of that. I just met her. And uh, one day I said to her, I said, listen, I got, to, I got to move some furniture. Would you like to help me? And she said, yes, and she did. And uh, I mean, this might sound, my daughter thinks I was crazy, but anyhow, it, I was blessed. I said, this girl's a worker. This girl's a worker and she has not stopped working yet. She's just that type. She's a, you know, wants to bless people and help people. And she does a great job with it. And I'm, I'm pretty blessed to be married to someone like, that. so God guided my path and I was prosperous in my journey too. Verse 26, it says, and the man bowed down his head and he worshiped the Lord. Man, recognition to God. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master uh, of his mercy and his truth. And I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. What a successful outcome to his journey, to his journey. What a successful one. Giving glory to God and thanks to God. God is in us. God is for us. That's just my note. We all know that. Verse 28. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. He ran too. These people are runners. They don't, well, I'll wander down and see what he wants. That wasn't their attitude. He ran down. And it came to pass when he saw the earrings and the bracelet upon her sister's hands, and he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well, and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and the room for the camels. And the man came into the house and he ungird his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men that were with him. See, the, the servant didn't go by himself. He had other people with him. And look at this. They washed his feet and the men that were with them. Thinking of spiritual things, comparing spiritual things with other spiritual things. It reminds me of Simon, who did not wash Jesus' feet or gave him any of the customary appreciation. See, just the opposite of that. These men did. Spiritual men think spiritually. They think about God being involved in what's going on. They think that way. When we have 
journeys, when we have things that we need to accomplish, we need to take God with us and expect favorable outcomes. That's what this whole record is teaching me. Verse 33. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, speak on. And he said, I am Abram's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly. And he hath become great. And he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and manservants and maidservants and camels and asses. This is like all the wealth that you could have in the lands and times of the Bible. This is, it was an agricultural society. So they, he had all that plus silver and gold. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old and unto him hath he given all that he had. So Isaac was going to get it all. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go into my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. What happens if she doesn't want to come? And he said unto me, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and thou shalt prosper in the way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son for my, from of my kindred and of my father's house. This is the second usage of the word prosper, meaning a favorable outcome or a desired outcome. In life, sometimes we have things like this that we need. I think I'll give you an example. My uh, minivan broke down, I lost the transmission. I needed to, a vehicle and I needed it like immediately. So I said to myself, like, yeah, I get this. So I, I prayed, I asked God, I did, the normal things a person would do to look for a vehicle. I got a list of where to go look for a car. I went to Uncle Henry's and looked, and I had a list that I wanted to go see. And I went to this place, and they had the car that I have now. It's, it's a Subaru. And it was sitting there, and I looked at it. It had everything I wanted. The price was what I wanted to pay, you know, better than I wanted to pay, lower, I mean lower in money. And, and then I said, thank you. And I started to go look in, at my list because I wanted to get the best vehicle I could for the money. And I went to a place and then I stopped and I told Ed was, who was with me. I said, we don't have to go any further. And I just went back and bought the car and I still got it. It was a, it's a great vehicle. God made this thing happen for me because it was a need I had, I needed a vehicle and I didn't waste a whole day, which I was thought I might have to, but I did it like first thing in the morning, came home and was ready to do other things. See, that was a favorable outcome, quickly done. That happens because of God. We have God in our lives. Let's go to verse 41. Then shall thou be clear from my oath when thou comest to my kindred. And if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear of my oath. So he's letting them know if it doesn't work out, it's okay. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way, this is the third usage, the way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass 
that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say unto her, give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink, and she shall say to me, both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels, let the same be the woman whom the Lord has, has appointed out for my master's son. So that's what he prayed for. You know something? Here's my note here. We should trust God much better than a man with an angel. Angels are wonderful. I'm not, <laughs> that's, but we have Holy Spirit all the time. We don't have to depend on an angel or wait for an angel to show up and fix our car, which has happened to believers, I know. Might have happened to me. But what we have is Holy Spirit. We have nine manifestations. We got God with us all the time. We pray, we ask God, and God can show us what to do and where to go. God favors us. That servant was saying is something like this. Hey, you know, it looks like God's working here. Looks like God's working for me. And that's what I say when I got my car in the morning. I said, looks like God's working for me. Looks like things are going. See, that's the confession and the mindset that we should have. God makes our journeys prosperous. Our goals, the things that we want. That's why I'm reading it. <laughs> Verse 45. And before I had done speaking in my heart. So when he was praying that time, he did it in his heart, kind of silently maybe. Behold, Rebecca came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and drew water. And I said unto her, let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste. She moved right along and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank and she made the camels to drink also. And I asked her and said, whose daughter art thou? And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Malachi bare unto him. And I put the earrings on her face and the bracelets upon her hands and I bowed down my head and I worshiped the Lord. First thing he did is recognize the Lord and bless the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. It reminds me of the song, the Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All we need to do is follow. Hey, one time I was at an outdoor uh, leadership program in the, in the forest or the wilderness of the Capitan Mountains. And I was with a group of believers and we were there. And they said, the leader of the group said to me, said, Steve, I want you to lead this group back to our campsite. I had no idea where our campsite was, but they said, just lead us back. And so I started walking and everyone's following me. And in my mind, I was singing this song. I was going, the Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I need to do is follow. And I walked right into our camp. Who would know that you could ask God and God would answer prayer? Well, the word of God is full of examples like this. That's why it's good when we're searching the scriptures, we're reading the scriptures, that we do look at scriptures of like manner. It helps to build our understanding. It's one of the keys in searching the scriptures. Jesus Christ made a big deal about search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. We are to search the scriptures in our minds, with each other, like spiritual matters with others. Look, 
You could just read Romans, but you'd miss all this pretty well. Let's do go to verse uh, 49. And now if ye de will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, the thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go and let her be thy master's son's wife as the Lord had spoken. See, they saw God working and they could not deny it. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't deny God. Look at verse 52. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshiped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. The servant gave them nice things. See, it's customary in the lands and times of the Bible to give gifts to your host. But these were very nice gifts, showing their appreciation. Custom, customs of the lands and times of the Bible, the oriental person who believes in God, knows God is real, and that's how they act. Verse 54. And they did eat and drink, and he and the men that were with him, and they tarried all night. And they arose up in the morning, and, and he said, send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days, least, at least 10 days after that she will go. So they wanted to change the plans the next morning. But the servant said unto them, if God is working, let's not change anything. God knows the way. God has a better way. He knows what would happen. Who knows? This is a question. Who knows what would happen during those 10 days? God does. He says, let's go. Let's keep with the plan that God set up. You know why? Because the Lord knows the way. He knows what's going on. We, he didn't know and we don't know what would happen during those 10 days. But we do know plan was set, so let's do what God says to do. Sometimes we're, we get in situations like that too, where we say, okay, God wants me to do this. I'll wait 10 days before I do it. Get, we don't want to be like that exactly. We want to do what God wants us to do when God wants us to do it. It's just fun. Verse 56, and he said unto them, hinder me not seeing the Lord hath what? Number four, number four my way. No, prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth and they called Rebecca and said unto her wilt thou go with this man and she said I will go wow and they sent away Rebecca their sister and her nurse gave her an extra person a nurse I think that means a helper a nurse and Abraham's servant and his men and they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gates of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose and her damsel, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man, and the man, and the servant took Rebecca and went his way. They didn't wait the 10 days. They just did what God wanted them to do because God was prospering them. They were looking for favorable accounts. 
desire that counts. And uh, I already said that was the fourth. Let's go to verse 62. It's, this is a great record. One chapter, all this information, wow. And verse 62, and Isaac came from the well, from the way of the well of uh, Lev Horana, Lev Hero, well, I tried, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the, the camels were coming. See, Isaac was a spiritual man also. And he was meditating. And he was thinking about the things of God. And that's what the word of God asks us to do, to think about the things of God to meditate on these things. If there be any virtue, if there be any good thing, think on these things. It also reminds me of Psalms, and I wanna read this to you. Psalms, the first Psalm, number one, verses one and two. I mean, two and three. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, does he meditate day and night? Meditate means think about. It, uh, I've heard it also said to talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Yeah, God's going to do this. Yeah, and I saw this in God's word. And Jesus Christ came that I might have life and have it. Yeah, more abundantly. Yeah, and God's going to watch over my journey here. I need a, what do you need? I need a new car. I need a job. I need a house. I need a wife. I need a whatever you need, right? You do that. And he, verse three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And we know what that looks like, the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall what? Have a favorable outcome. That's what it means. Let's finish up here in verse 64. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servants had said, It's my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the, the servant told Isaac, all things that had been done. And Isaac brought her unto his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after, after his mother's death. And that's the end of the record in Genesis. Of course, you can continue reading. There's more stuff there. But what are the lessons for us? What are the lessons for us? Well, we can have favorable outcomes in our lives as we pray. We ask God for help. We allow God to show us the way. By following his guidance, we can have the desired outcomes that we want in our lives as we trust in God. In every category of our lives, in our jobs, in our relationships, in our desires, in our witnessing. I think of this a lot in uh, Acts 1, 8. It says, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in all these places, right? Well, we should expect favorable outcomes in our witnessing. We have Holy Spirit much better than an angel in our fellowships. Our fellowships should prosper. They should grow. They should be just dynamic with people and stuff. We need to think about these things with the thoughts of God being in our mind. So God bless you all. Thanks for listening. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter. 
grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Jaynes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.